the dissertation defense of Kenneth Henry. <laughs> and uh, the, so we have a PhD committee here up front. Uh, Kenneth, will, the, the overall protocol for this is that Kenneth will give a presentation, ideally at 45 minutes. Um, the committee will be as we interrupt at various times for clarification questions. The guests are all welcome, but because we're a little bit limited on time, I'm going to limit the discussion to the PhD committee. Uh, then we'll have, so phase two is we have a round of open discussion with the committee. And then after Kenneth survives that, then, then we ask Kenneth and the, red and the guests to leave the rooms, then we're going to have a closed discussion with the committee. And this is the time when family and friends are very welcome to help support the candidate. <laughs> you will see weight loss by the minute as he goes on. <laughs> and then we ask him in and give him the final words. And so that's, that's the protocol. They say in theater that uh, one of the most use useless people is the director on opening night. And that's sort of my position here. Uh, I have probably heard at maybe 50 different presentations from Kenneth leading up to this. And I know every word that he's going to say. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's the, the general style is that the PhD advisor, by now, should have asked all the questions. So, when I ask a question, I'm probably trying to lead Kenneth in some direction. It's a bad, devious motive for asking. So. Kenneth, it's all yours. Yes, okay. Um, one thing I need to give you is our these are various pages that we need. Various pages that we need various at some point. Yeah. Okay. okay, you want your notepad back? Ah, yeah, just in case I guess there are <coughs> comments that I need to make. Okay. 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 okay, good morning, all. I very much appreciate all this the committee members being here. Um, my wife, Marcella, is in the back, and uh, that's the person who has taken me through some of the dark times here. You, you all here have been or are probably going to go through some of the PhD process, so you know what I mean about the dark times. And then my father is a senior, Ken, sitting there also, and um, he's the one who really kind of imbued me as a child with the wish to know how things work. So that's kind of what has taken me to where I am now, trying to figure out how, how I can document credibility works. Uh, so with that, let me start into the more interesting part. This is just an outline of what I'll talk to you about. Um, uh, I'm going to give you an overview, um, which is really just, uh, uh, I'm going to give you the punchline first. So I, I'll tell you what the research questions were, what the contributions are that have come out of the research, what methodology I use, and give you kind of just a one slide synthesis of the results. Um, then I will go through the details, I give you some background, tell you some more details about the actual research methodology that was used, give you the detailed results, uh, the five steps of the research methodology, and then a summary, um, and that will be it. Uh, there are some additional slides if the committee members need to get into detail of some of, the, uh, some of the results. I have those. I didn't include them in the presentation because I'm going to be very strict on myself about the 45 minute time limit. Okay, so the research questions that really um, started out this, uh, this process were, went through real evolution, but they ended up being First of all, the question is how do banks and other financial institutions know what to believe about the identity of a new customer? Um, the sort of typical answer is the, the customer is going to try and prove who they are either by something to do with what the person is, and that's usually biometrics of some kind, or it's what the person knows, and that's typically a password, or what they have, and that's going to be an identity document of some kind, a token, which may be either electronic, digital, um, or some kind of hard copy. But 
the research question really came down to something more specific. Uh, and my, my interest was when I think about those documents, what you have, <coughs> what are the attributes that experts look for when they're judging the credibility of those documents? Okay? When I present a driver's license to somebody who's an expert in dealing with uh, my identity documents, what is it about my driver's license that makes them believe that I am who I say I am and that the driver's license is in fact not a, a fraudulent? Uh, document. And then, and that's the third bullet now, having specified what those attributes are that the experts are looking for, how do they rate the importance of those attributes? Because not all of those attributes are equally important. I mean, the fact that my driver's license has a photograph and a signature perhaps may be more important than the fact that it's a Florida driver's license. All of those are attributes of the document, but some attributes are more important than others. So the experts, whether they realize it consciously or not, must have some way of measuring the credibility of the document when they look at it. That's part of the judgment that they make. And they have to make a determination about various types of identity documents that are available. Um, and they have to make decisions about what is more credible about one kind of document than another. So those are the research questions. The contribution that this makes is, first of all, the, the major contribution here is a methodology that elicits the critical um, and these attributes from the experts when they evaluate the credibility of the documentary evidence. So that's the, that's the main contribution here. This is a methodology that you can use to understand how <coughs> experts evaluate documentary evidence. And I'm applying it particularly in the identity fraud domain, but you can imagine that this is generalizable to a number of other areas. My career has been in auditing. Auditors look at a lot of documentary evidence. This methodology could be applied there. Okay, just as an example of, of, of some areas where you could use it. The result of this methodology is an interorganizational synthesis of the knowledge of these credibility attributes, these critical credibility.